In this video we're going to look at the work of John Singer Sargent and I'm going to discuss some conspiracy and I'm also going to discuss some of the aesthetic aspects of his work. Now John Singer Sargent was born in Europe. He was of American heritage. He came from a wealthy background and he led a kind of bohemian life in Europe and he was taught in the Academy of Carolus Duran in Paris. He was a painter of the Belle Epoque, so the late 1800s, early 1900s and he was famous for painting aristocratic portraits and he's one of the great portraitists of that time and he's one of the greatest painters of the head that there's been but his work does have weaknesses which don't put him on the level of an old master but he's a very good artist and we're going to discuss some of the weaknesses of his work and his strengths and also some of the conspiratorial aspects of his work now this is a portrait of a woman called Mrs Asher Wertheimer and the Wertheimers were picture dealers for the Rothschilds. So this was a time in the early 1900s where the Rothschilds were famous and out in the public eye and so were all these rich families and they would have portraits painted of them. Now this family was a family who worked for the Rothschilds, they were called the Wertheimers and if you look at this portrait she would have had to pose for at least about five days and of with sergeant painted it from life and you can clearly see that she's doing a satanic hand gesture in the painting there and she would have kept her hand like this for at least about five days And Sargent actually did another po painting of her all in white and she didn't like it, she said it wasn't dark enough. So he painted her like this and you can obviously see a satanic hand gesture. So we're going to discuss this more by looking at paintings by Sargent. Now here is the family portrait of the Churchills. His wife was actually a Vanderbilt called Consuelo. And one of these characters here, and you can see it's all in the heritage. And this is one of Sargent's weakest paintings. He, it's, he, it's full of what Sargent does worst, where he goes too over the top with elongation and his work looks superficial. But what you've got to think about is that Sargent was painting these rich clients and it's the most difficult job possible and the thing is he did most of his paintings from life and if he didn't like the painted he would actually scrape the whole painting down and start again now let's look at another painting by Sargent this one and in this painting he paints a group of uh, university dons I think it's at Harvard or Yale but you can see the strengths and weaknesses of Sargent's paintings like he tries to do a painting like Velazquez and Las Meninas but the figures look sh small and they don't fit the, the space properly and so it just shows you how difficult that painting by Velazquez is now you can see that the figures are elongated but they still look small within the painting and so Sargent is a painter who is extremely talented, but who I think could have pushed himself even further. And this is the portrait of Lord Arthur James Balfour, who signed the Balfour Declaration, which gave Israel the land of Palestine to the Rothschilds. And the head is incredible. This is paintings in the National Portrait Gallery. But you can see the weakness of Sargent. This is typical of Sargent, is that his work has incredibly painted heads. And then it has like sloppy parts like this arm. 
it's it's just really really long and here's a funny caricature of it by by punch the magazine punch but you can see who sergeant was mixing with he was mixing with the elite of the elite and this woman is a Rothschild and a Sassoon and her name was Countess of Rock Savage and otherwise known as Sybil Sassoon. Now the Sassoons were a Sephardic family from Iran and they were the richest family in Iran and they intermarried with the Rothschild family and she is the offspring of that union and one of their descendants is actually the head of trade in the UK and they're unelected. But what it shows you is that Iran is controlled opposition. And the richest people in Iran in history have been the Sassoons and they intermarried with the Rothschilds. So you can see how the world really works through looking at the paintings of sergeants. And here's Sargent's painting of John D. Rockefeller. So the main foundation, which is funding everything, and it's just rumoured that the Rockefellers got their money from the Rothschilds. And when you read about this, you realise that the Rockefellers didn't really have much interest in painting. But they liked this painting that Sargent did of J.D. Rockefeller because he flattered him. Now, Sergeant's sitters would complain that Sergeant did not flatter them enough. So you can imagine how difficult it was for Sergeant. And here is a portrait of Woodrow Wilson by Sergeant. And so you can see how Sergeant mixed with the elite of the elite. And Sergeant himself was probably a Freemason, but he probably wasn't a serious one because he wouldn't have the time to be a mason because he was so busy painting and that's his self-portrait and what's great about Sargent is that he brought new life into portrait painting by directly painting the model and learning from impressionistic techniques and it gives his paintings an immediacy which you don't get through academic painting and that is what the strength that Sargent's painting has. It has this kind of immediacy about it. But I want to show you here that you have a clear satanic hand gesture from this woman who was a family connected with the Rothschilds. Now, this is my favourite painting by Sargent. It's of a girl from Capri and it has everything that's great about Sargent, the beautiful tones and the way he captures the character and personality and it feels so alive. And this is what academic painting did not have and Sargent breathed new life into academic painting. And this is his most famous painting. So you can see the way it represents the Belle Epoque and how Sargent was a painter of the rich and the powerful. And by looking at these books and art and reading them, you realise that all the conspiracy theories are actually true. And further from that, that these people control the world. Thank you.